It's been a, um, a great uh, great journey for the last three weeks uh, touring around the Western Cape uh, as a part of the Mary G Festival, the Mary G Tour. Now my guest, Daniel Bracegirdle, local man. Morning Daniel, how you going? Hey, good. How are you, Tiger? Mate, going well, I tell you. This is, um, it's always good to be up here in communities, you know. Last week it was Pomparao, the week before Kawanyama, now Arakoon, and um, oh, it just makes me angry to see all that bad bad press about Arakoon, and then you can come in this community and just have a ball, you know. It's amazing. So, uh, feeling good. Tell me a bit about your story. You're a um, white fellow growing up. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in a little town called Otford, uh, about 50 minutes south of Sydney, in the Royal National Park. What brought you up here to Arakoon? When, when did you get here? I came up in uh, 99 for the first time and um, I started working at the Art Centre. I got a background in visual arts and um, I stayed on and continued doing work with um, new media and we got the radio station running and we've now got a database of traditional knowledge being recorded and we've got local people involved in it, so it's brilliant. Um, you're married up in the community, which makes it makes it a, a little better too. Well, you're almost well, you've only been in there ten years, so you're not quite a local yet, I suppose. But um, how does it feel to to come out of Melbourne, or well, south of Melbourne, and then to to Sydney? Sorry, Sydney to come out of Sydney and um, and to be up here for ten years. I mean, it is. I, I can understand why you're still here. Don't worry. But um, for a white fellow to come into a, a predominantly black community and come in with the skills that you've got and and to work with community, I mean. Satisfying oh, for yourself, the, the feeling you get for your work and contribution here and living in community? Mm, absolutely, yeah. Lots of ways I suppose I found myself, you know. I'm in my mid-30s and um, found like a, a path that I can follow now. A reason for being, eh? Yeah, that's it. Now, this visual arts background of yours is certainly great in a, in a place where there's such a wealth of talent. There's a wealth of talent across the board. It doesn't matter where it is. You, you, there is a wealth of talent here, like, a, like most Aboriginal communities? Oh, yeah. That's that's understatement, yeah. Unless, you know, if the Arts Centre is only just really really getting uh, big exhibitions in the, in the cities now, and overseas, of course, Holland last year, in Utrecht, and um, potential for the visual arts is, is huge here, yeah. And you were involved um, with the, the trip to Holland. I had Joel on yesterday talking about his trip to Holland, and you, you, you were a member of that, of that team. Yeah, I, I helped manage the, the, all the, the, the guys going over, and, um, yeah, eight of us went. Um, yeah, the, all the guys from here, is first time overseas for them, so um, it was sort of special for me to, to actually help facilitate it all. And, you know, they, for them, it was a life-changing experience, of course. The first time out of the country land in um, uh, in Amsterdam and then um, short ride down into Utrecht which is a tiny little university town very typical Dutch town and um, no cars or all bikes everywhere crazy cyclists uh, it was all too short that was the only setback it was only for 10 days so um, so hopefully um, there's other trips planned for the future here yeah. So there's a bit of a, there's, there is a relation, not a bit of a relation, there's a relationship established with the Dutch government and people from Arakoon? Yeah, ab absolutely. Because of the landings here 400 years ago, they, they, the Dutch felt there was, there was a reason for a reconciliation between the two groups and the people of Arnhem Land as well. Yeah, because the Dutch had landed up there. And, um, and they, uh, as we know, they're great lovers of art, the Dutch. So, um, now the law poles that are made here are sitting in a museum. It's an art museum, and it's it's in in the middle of Holland. That's pretty bizarre. When you think about it. <laughs> it certainly is. Now you're involved also in documentary making, um, assisting with the managing of the, the broadcast here, the, the radio station with uh, young Leslie. There's plenty to keep you busy. Yeah, and and the biggest thing is we've got Wick Media operating here as a small company now. We're a, a proprietary limited, owned by local people on the ground here in Arakoon, and that's one huge step, I think, for the people here. And um, we've got a hundred percent support from from um, all. Um, we've got we've got seven people working for Wick Media now, so it's brilliant. <laughs> that's that's a great uh, great result, mate. A great achievement. Some of the work you do, 
you've got some cultural awareness. Joel was talking about uh, who was also a member of the, the Wick Media team working for working for Wick Media. Joel was talking about cultural awareness uh, workshops with uh, Chalco Mine, Mining Company. Is it Chalco? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Chalco uh, Mining, the um, Aboriginal, uh, the Arakoon Bauxite Project Office is here in town and they're in the second year of the feasibility study for the mine to, to, to kick off. We've been running cultural awareness programs here. Um, uh, we do like two a week with all types of people that work for the company. And um, it's, great. It's, it's great to see these local guys get up and talk about their culture to outside people and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Did they approach you or did you approach them? Um, how how did, it, did it come about? I mean, it's great that, that it's happening. I mean, that's fantastic because this is a strong cultural centre, Arakoon, and if people are going to come in and mine, they've got to recognise uh, um, that the importance of that and hear some of the people's stories and stuff. How did it happen in the first place? Well, they came to us because they heard about the database and um, the, all the documentary films we've been making. So they came and, and it just, it was one of those things that was going to happen, you know. It was just a matter of time. So we've got the first cultural awareness program off the ground here in uh, Arakoon. First one ever. So, yeah. Oh, mate, that's great. Now, some of the documentaries, um, you've got Stanley uh, Kalkiota, uh, also a key member of WIC Media. Um, you've been making some documentaries on some bush medicine, bush tucker, stuff like that? Yeah, we've done um, three documentaries now, um, half an hour programs in all in language, subtitled English, of course, for the outsiders. And um, we haven't really tried to market our work. We've got the first one went up on NITV. They replayed all the time. And now we're in the stage now where we're looking at doing more um, detailed um, uh, programs about culture and getting big funding, you know, and trying to hit, you know, international audience. And so that's where we're at now. That's, that's fantastic, mate. It's really good to see. Last night, the Mary G concert. How would you feel? Looking around, you're seeing almost the whole community there. I mean, how was that? Was that the first time that this sort of thing oh, happened? Buzz. It was such a buzz to see, <clears throat> I reckon, uh, 700, 800 people. Um, I'm seeing that many American people together having a laugh and probably going to be a while we see it again you know so it was just such a it was such a buzz and of course um, everyone knows Mary G's talents at, at communicating with people and, and the positive health messages he gets so he's, he's just he's, he's, he's just a unique character isn't he? <laughs> Amazing character really. Some of the young ones I was talking to in here yesterday was asking me I was 19, 20 year olds and some a bit a little younger they just can't grasp why a man wants to put a dress on and what his wife thinks and his growing up sons think and stuff like that. It's really, it's great just to sit there and have a yarn to people. But, um, yeah, you've been a bit busy too um, with, with, uh, with Mary G in town helping out as just a part of the, 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 the community uh, collaboration and involvement. Yeah, from, from um, day one um, uh, we started having meetings, you know, weeks ago, of course, to put all this together. And um, <clears throat> it's just gone really smoothly. Everyone's come together, of course. And um, it's now we've got a core group of people who want to continue doing this work. And that's a really important point, I think. You know, um, we all didn't spend much time together, but now we do. You know, because of this event. And everyone, yeah, we all know who we are in the community. So um, hopefully, we can all come together and um, and, and talk through um, our radio station here about issues that are really important. So um, we've got a tie line now system and um, the Cape York uh, Radio Network's going to be launched soon. So that's really exciting as well. Now tell me a little bit about that radio network. Um, there's that, that a link up with other, other stations in the Cape here? Yeah, all 12 uh, remote communities in, Queen, in Cape York uh, are going to have the opportunity now to talk and communicate through their radio stations for the first time again. So. Uh, potentially uh, anything can happen. It's, um, it's really exciting. Um, there's a course starting uh, next week on Tuesday down in Cairns, um, QREM, and hopefully they can help us facilitate some of the training. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. 
and uh, to have young Leslie beside you too, like he's, he's really keen. He's both been down for training and stuff. But also, Daniel, to, to come in and see this studio fitted out like it is. I mean, you've got new gear here. It's part of a um, an upgrade of the ribs across uh, across the country. But this is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, we've got the latest gadgets here now. You know, we've got, um, as I said, we've got a tie line machine here. We can, we can do our program between here and Napanam, say, and then Napanam can shoot their program back down here and through back through the Arakoon aerial, and we can hear it in our households. So, um, yeah, it's anything anything can happen. From here. This radio, these radio stations, it, it's a it's a sort of almost a forgotten resource, or, or people don't really think about utilising their local radio so much. Sometimes they're not working and stuff, but by gee, it's essential to have them working all the time and have people trained up, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, you know. Um, I think we spoke on Mary, I spoke on Mary Stu's show the other night about concentration of the Australian media, you know, we've got three big families control all our media, and I think time's right now that remote uh, to just get off the ground and and start talking about what happens from our communities to the outside world instead of the other way around the outside world talking about us and uh, that's a brilliant way of combating it you know like we don't have all the dollars and all the all the uh, you know um, structures they've got but we can um, we can still combat their stories with our own stories and we all know that stories are the most powerful things uh, one of the most powerful things that humans have got, you know. That's right, and we've got master storytellers um, in, in our communities. There's no question about that. It's just making the links, getting out there. Mate, anything else you want to say before we wind up? Uh, uh, thanks, Tiger, for coming in. And um, WIC Media looks look forward to um, uh, partnership with um, Brisbane Digital Media. And, um, uh, yeah, thanks again for coming in, and um, thanks to Karen yourself. Thank you. No worries, mate. It's good to have you here and the partnerships that uh, money going to get stronger. Uh, I remember back four or five years ago when we first met up and your challenges and your frustrations and the struggles. Um, you had a studio down the other end of the building and a transmitter right beside you and things. And now to look four and five years later at the development, the achievements, it's only because people like yourself uh, and others in the community continue to move forward, continue to, to to want more, to want better, to do better, you know. So it's fantastic, mate. Thanks a lot for the hospitality and looking after us all here so well, too. It's, it's always a pleasure to come to Arakoon. Thank you. Yeah, pleased to have you. Thanks, Tiger. That's Daniel Bracegirdle. And uh, one of the key people here with the communications and uh, documentary making and stuff, working with local WIC people.